Okay, you guys, this is the big one. We're going to go over pulmonary edema, okay? Pulmonary edema. This is a life-threatening buildup of fluid in the lungs, okay? Fluid buildup in the lungs, um, in your interstitial spaces, and your alveoli, okay? This is a life-threatening condition, all right? It's commonly associated with CHF, okay? CHF is congestive heart failure, all right? The heart and the lungs, they're like this, okay? They work very, very closely together, okay? So keep that in mind when we go over manifestations, when we go over diagnostic and testings and all of that. Keep in mind that the heart and the lungs work together closely like this, all right? So again, your pathophysiology behind pulmonary edema is that life-threatening buildup of fluid in the lungs, okay? Primarily in your interstitial spaces and your alveoli. Okay, we know our alveoli are those little grape-like sacs okay, that are responsible for the exchange of our gases, okay? our gas exchange. All right, Pulmonary edema um, usually results from left ventricular failure in the heart. Okay? It can also occur as an exacerbation of chronic heart failure or occur following um, an MI, okay? a myocardial infarction, in other words, a heart attack. Okay, so... <clears throat> your etiology behind this systolic dysfunction diastolic dysfunction okay and then renal vascular hypertension all right um so when an increase of fluid in your pulmonary interstitial um, and alveolar spaces occurs it results in cardiogenic pulmonary edema okay that's your end result that's what's causing this okay um, this occurs because there's a it's a fast a very fast and acute increase of left atrial filling pressure, okay, which causes an elevated left ventricular filling pressure, okay. There is also non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, um, and this is associated with um, with a diffuse filling of the alveolar spaces, okay. And there are different, different etiologies behind this, but your key ones are congestive heart failure, okay? Your heart not working correctly. Um, and what, another thing that I need you to remember is that pulmonary edema, it is a severe condition, okay? It's a severe condition and the survival rate is like 50%, okay? Um, there are some other chronic disorders uh, like myocardial ischemia, all right? And acute hypertensive crisis, that put your patients at greater risk for developing pulmonary edema as well, okay? But congestive heart failure, um, the mortality rate is so elevated for that. Males are typically affected more than females. And then your older adult patient, I always talk about the older adult, um, they are at a higher risk for developing pulmonary edema as well, okay? So what kind of impact is this going to have on your patient's lives, okay? Cardiogenic, um, the, physiology, the physiology and the psychosocial aspects of this for cardiogenic, pre-existing heart disease and acute MIs, okay? Cardiogenic pulmonary edema, it typically happens in clients who have a history of heart disease, okay? So clients who do not have a history of heart disease um, is most likely caused by a acute MI or a myocardial infarction or heart attack, okay? Something that happened to the heart is going to lead or can lead to pulmonary edema, okay, as a complication, all right? Um, clients who have a history of cardiac disease should be educated and made aware of manifestations of pulmonary edema so they know what to look for, okay? Lifestyle factors um, such as low sodium diet, the DASH diet, okay? Um, and regular exercise is very, very important for, um, for these patients, okay? Very important considerations for your clients with this history. Okay, the respiratory changes. Um, hold on. <laughs> the respiratory changes uh, with age and um, occurrence that are common in conditions like dyspnea can often be overlooked. So you want to be um, very mindful of those. Aging is also associated with higher sensitivity when it comes to pulmonary edema. Okay, um, they're they're very sensitive to developing like adverse reactions to medications related to chronic conditions that they're already on. Okay, the clinical presentation, what this is going to look like for your patients: excessive shortness of breath, gasping for air. Their alveoli is being filled with fluid. Okay, we know our alveoli is responsible for our gas exchange. 
Inhale oxygen, exhale CO2. It exchanges in our alveoli. But can that take place if there's fluid building up in there? No. Okay, so there is going to be some extreme shortness of breath, that gasping from, for air. They're going to look like they're drowning outside of water. Okay, um, they're going to have anxiety because they can't breathe. They're going to have some confusion, some agitation. Be mindful of their, cogn their cognition. Okay, they're going to be confused. They're not getting enough oxygen in the body or to the brain. Um, because this is heart related as well, they're going to have some hypertension with some JVD. Okay, JVD is jugular vein distension. Okay, how you assess that, have them turn to the head. Okay, shine a light on their neck right here, and you'll see it pulsating and bulging outward. That's that jugular vein distension, this vein right here. Okay, for labs and diagnostic studies, you want to rule out any anemia, any blood problems. Okay, rule that out first. Okay, rule out anemia, um, rule out sepsis. Okay, make sure that it's not due to any bacteria. You want to make sure there's no electrolyte imbalance. So getting a CMP or a BMP, that comprehensive metabolic panel or that basic metabolic panel, um, just to make sure that there is no electrolyte imbalance. Anytime there is an issue with fluid, okay, whether too much or too little, you always need to consider your electrolytes. Okay, monitor a pulse ox. Okay, get a pulse ox, ABGs, arterial blood gases. There will be a video coming for that as well. Make sure you stay tuned. Um, and then a chest x-ray, okay? You definitely wanna get a chest x-ray on these patients, okay? So look at the, look at the levels, look at the lungs, okay? Any patients, um, so as your role, your role of the nurse, any patients that's experiencing pulmonary edema, they may require more advanced care. More advanced care, consultations with many specialists, a cardiologist, a pulmonologist, pulmonologist, like many different specialties that they will have to see. Okay, the risk factors for future cardiac and pulmonary events should be minimized by ensuring that they follow up properly. Okay, follow up with their outpatient physicians, their specialists. Okay, the availability for medical assistance and clients um, should be investigated um, before before the care plan or while the care plan is taking place, can they get to their cardiology appointments? Okay, because there's no sense of um, of creating that and do, working together and doing all of that. The patient can't even get there. Okay, so you also want to you as the nurse should be able to um, to assist them in that avenue as well. Um, more severe outcomes to this can lead to mechanical ventilation um, and even ICU. Okay, I see you for a high acuity, a higher acuity of care to be delivered to these patients. Okay, um, cardiac conditions. This is that is the main focus. That's the main focus um, and the main factor for pulmonary edema. You get that under control, the pulmonary edema will either be prevented or under control as well. Okay, so make sure they're compliant. Identify any issues of non-compliance poor socioeconomic situations for that client, any recurrence of the condition is the responsibility of care providers because you should be attacking every single part, okay? So going through your nursing process for these patients, recognizing these cues, doing your exam, looking for the presence of JVD, okay? Abnormalities in your vital signs, adventitious lung signs, dyspnea, abnormal heart sounds, any tenderness in the abdomen as well. That could be a hepatomegaly, okay? Um, anything abnormal you want it, you want to assess, okay? You wanna recognize, that's your recognizing cues, okay? You also have um, labs, okay? Look at the CBC, collect, get an, uh, this is all data collection in your assessment. Get a CBC, get a CMP or a BMP for the electrolytes. Draw, get these, um, get those ABGs drawn. You won't be drawing them, but Make sure they're done, okay? Um, make sure all of that is done along with an EKG and an X-ray, okay? Analyzing these cues. You want to analyze all of the data that you have collected. Um, notify, notice any respiratory distress, any hypoxemia, that's low oxygen in the blood, okay? Any fluid overload, signs of fluid overload. This is going to be an abnormal buildup of fluid in the extremities. Okay, more prominent in the lower extremities, that pedal edema, okay? You wanna look for all of that. Analyze these cues, okay? The client is presenting, um, the client presenting with acute pulmonary edema will report an increased shortness of breath with exertion as well. 
okay? Difficulty breathing while laying down. If they tell you, I cannot lay flat, red flag, okay? If they tell you, I have to sleep with a bunch of pillows, red flag, okay? That's also something that you wanna notice, you want to notice, okay? Edema, again, in their lower extremities. Abnormal weight gain. If they've gained 10 pounds within a few days, that is abnormal, okay? Check their edema, okay? Pedal edema, I keep stressing that, stressing, pedal edema, okay? Then now you wanna generate, generate some solutions for your patient, okay? Once the airway is patent, that's your ABCs, your first things first, airway, patent airway, okay? And oxygenation are managed, okay? The plan of care will, will involve um, well-organized interdisciplinary teams. So meeting with everybody on the healthcare team, as I mentioned, a cardiologist, pulmonologist, et cetera. Okay, you guys will all work together to promote and provide the best care for the best outcome for your patient. Okay, um, then you take action. Okay, now it's time to take action. You as the nurse, I mean, you've been taking action, but direct action and management of the care of the patient for that has pulmonary edema. It begins with correct positioning. Okay, high fowlers or semi fowlers to accommodate that lung expansion. Okay, reposition them frequently, okay? Um, you wanna titrate their oxygen as needed, okay, or as tolerated. So don't over-oxygenate them for any longer than you have to. You may have to start titrating down, okay? You wanna reverse the hypoxia, yes, but you don't want them dependent on it, okay? Ease their anxiety, set the mood, okay? I always talk about it, set the mood, all right, in the environment. Bring a calm, a sense of calm in the environment as well, okay? Then evaluate your outcomes, okay? We want to see an improved oxygen um, delivery. We want to see reduced shortness of breath or work at breathing. We want to see all of that improved, okay? <clears throat> that is pretty much pulmonary edema, and you guys got this. Happy studying.